video where we're going through the things in the ImpactJS documentation. And in this one, we will go over animations. So uh, creating animations in Impact is handled with what is known as an animation sheet. It's basically just a big image containing all the individual animation frames. And the frames num are numbered uh, from zero in the top corner and then going through uh, each row. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, as you can see in the image on screen. So this is different from the tile numbering for background maps, which doesn't start at zero, but starts at one. So this is a little bit of discrepancy to know about ImpactJS, that the animation sheets start with zero, but the background maps tile numbers start with one. And to create the animation sheet, um, you specify the image file to use as well as the width and height of each frame. So this animation sheet here could be created as a class property to be loaded with the preloader and see working with assets, which we'll go over next for more info. So when you create a new animation, you hand over the animation sheet, the time each frame is displayed in seconds and the array of frames uh, specifying the sequence. So for example, if you had a person that was trying to walk versus run, you can use the same animation sheet, but you can change the timing and the uh, sequence of frames from the animation sheet. So here is this blob PNG, which you see on the screen. And we are basically creating an animation sheet out of blob.png. Each frame is 16 by 16 pixels. Uh, and then we are creating a jump animation from this. Uh, so basically, we first created an animation sheet, and now we're creating the animation. The animation takes the animation sheet, the timing of 0.2 seconds. Uh, so note that the timing is in seconds and not milli uh, microseconds or anything like that. And then. Um, the animation sheet will use frames two, three, and four. So here we would uh, we are saying that we're going to use two, three, and four starting from zero. And the last parameter tells us if uh, the animation stops on the last frame or doesn't stop and kind of loops back. So. After you've created an animation, you have to update it for each game frame using the dot update and you can draw it using dot draw. So after you've created, um, okay, so they didn't write an example of that. It would have been nice if they had given an example, but that's okay. You will see plenty as we go. Uh, so animating entities. When animating entities, you can use some of the entities utility methods to make your life a bit easier. Each entity has an anim sheet property, which you can load the default animation sheet for it. And entities also have a dot anims object to which all the animations you define with the add anim method are added to. So the dot add anim method takes the same parameters like the constructor for animations except that it always uses the anim sheet as the animation sheet. So here uh, when you create the animation in the constructor you're always specifying which animation sheet to use which instance of the animation sheet to use. But with the entity uh, animation, when you're adding it, it's basically going to be the same thing with the timing and the frames and whether to stop at the end or not. But it's always going to use the same animation sheet that has been defined for that entity. Um, okay. And the entities draw method automatically draws the current animation at the entity's position. So 
So here's an example. So create your own entity. Entity blob is extending the IG entity. Um, and then you're loading the animation sheet with animation sheet. So you've got the blob PNG with the 16 by 16 um, frame size. And then your initializing function is basically taking the X, Y, and the settings. Then we are adding an idle animation and a jump animation to this entity. And as you can see, we skipped the animation sheet part of it, but we just gave the label idle or jump. We gave it the timing, 1.5 seconds when we're idle and 0.2 seconds when we're jumping between frames. And then the frames we're using when we're idle is 1, 1, and 2. And then when we're jumping, we're doing 2, 3, and 4. So if we look here, 1, 1, and 2 is kind of, um, he's idle. It's just that every 1 and a half sec, uh, 3 seconds, uh, he's going to do 1 and a half seconds of frame 2, where he kind of lowers down. So he, he stays animated, even though he's idle. And then when he's jumping, uh, you can see that we're doing 2, 3, and 4, so you can see 4 is kind of up in the air. All right, and going back to continue, uh, our entity, after we have called the init function, we are calling the parent constructor, uh, this.parent x, y, n settings. So this entity can already be used in the Weltmeister level editor and will be animated in the game. Its current anim will be set to the idle animation because it was added first. So when you are initializing an entity, it's important to know that the default uh, current animation will be the first one that you add and not the last one that you add. So to switch between animations, you just set the current anim to one of the other animations that you define. So during update, if something happens and you want it to jump, you know, your character to jump, your blob to jump, so you're just gonna say this dot current anim is equal to this dot anims dot jump dot rewind. And else this dot current anim is equal to this dot anims dot idle. So he's idle but when you tell it to jump in some condition maybe a key press uh, you can make it the anims uh, jump so what are the key things to remember here so we have the current anim in the entity we have the anims of the entity which we can add using add anim and a jump can basically will end with the true state at the end uh, the idle state loops around there's uh, it's not true uh, when you add anim as the last parameter which makes it stop on the last frame right cool and so that was about animating the entities and now to animate the background maps you can specify certain tiles to be animated and each background map has an anims property as well just like uh, the entities had an anims property so that anims property maps a tile number to an animation so let's say that we created this data we had this background map uh, if you want to know more about background maps uh, check the previous video um, and so this background map has a tile size of 16 takes the data takes the tile set and creates a new animation sheet as um, with the tiles and 16 by 16 frames and then in the background anims the fifth uh, tile is basically going to be animated as an animation using the animation sheet that we just defined with a 0.1 second uh, timer and it will keep looping between 
um, tiles 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And that's it. So note that animations are not updated by the background map, but must be updated externally. And IG game has some facilities for that. See background anims. So let's quickly go over and check out this background anims here. So we are looking at the impact game here. And in the game properties, we, where did my background anims go? Here it is. So in the properties of the game, uh, we have here um, an object specifying the animated tiles for the particular tile set. Note that you have to set this before loading a level through load level and animation sheet is a new animation sheet, background anims. Um, take the animation sheet and say zero is a new animation and five is a new animation uh, and then you can load the level. So yeah, I agree with this disclaimer that this is kind of somewhat stupid, but um, it is what it is. So you're essentially creating the level, and then after creating the level, you are manually adding animations to certain uh, tiles uh, using this IG.animation. So I think it would be nice to simply extend uh, the Weltmeister level editor to allow choosing tiles and making them animated and choosing the frames and the timing for that animation. And then this particular piece of code could just be generated from the Weltmeister um, level editor and you would then take that level and load it in. So I think that would be a better approach to uh, doing this particular animating of certain tiles in the level. Anyways, um, that's it for animation sheets and animation and uh, let's okay. Let's look at the class reference quickly of these as well. Uh, we've already kind of seen it in the doc that we just went through, but here we are creating an animation. It takes in the animation, uh, the tile sheet. So first you create the animation sheet, and then you create the animation. Same thing we just saw. Um, then you can call the update animation to the current frame. You can call the draw current frame by saying anim.draw at x, y. The animation object takes care of animating an entity or a background map tile frames from an animation sheet. An image with all animation frames are drawn as specified by the animations frame time and sequence. And in most of the cases, you shouldn't need to create an animation object by yourself but instead use the add anim method and we saw the add anim method in the tutorial already uh, constructing it is basically the same thing sheet frame time sequence and whether to stop at the end or not properties alpha uh, can help us change the opa opacity of the animation uh, default is of course one uh, we can change the rotation or the angle of this animation, uh, the center of the rotation specified by dot pivot. Um, flip allows us to flip the animation on the x-axis or the y-axis. Frame is the current frame number, which is set by the update method. Loop count is an integer which can specify how often the animation has been played through since the last call to rewind and note that even if the animation has stopped at the last frame the loop count is updated as if the animation is still running P 
pivoting x and y it's the center of the rotation when using dot angle um, the default is half the width and height of the animation sheet the center of the animation frame tile the current tile of the animation sheet set by the update method and then the methods are drawing going to a particular frame going to a random frame rewinding the animation and updating the animation to the current frame all right so that is it for animation and animation sheet as we saw is just a sheet that is used in it basically the same stuff again um, it's created using the file path the width and the heights and that's essentially it it just has two properties the image itself the width and height nothing too much to see there so we have covered animation animation sheet background map we covered in the last video um, class is simply just like an object um, in the, in the game for example a person or a ninja or an enemy or uh, your bullet or whatever thing a class is simply uh, you just extend ig.class and you can give it per, uh, properties and you can give it an init function and that's essentially a class and you can instantiate these classes as new person passing in whatever properties you have defined for the constructor um, so that's essentially how you build a class an inject works similar to extend but does not not create a new class instead it changes the class in place and this is useful if you want to change the behavior of one of the impact classes without changing the source code of the engine so um, you know like if you're writing a plugin or something so class ID uh, basically is just a property when you're extending a class uh, init method static instantiate uh, this dot parents so just very generic class stuff um, so that we have talked about this uh, since I don't think I'll be doing a separate video on class so in the next video we'll talk about assets and uh, go from there see you in the next one